Today we're going to be swapping the headlights out on my 2010 Chevy Silverado. Now I was lucky enough for Form Lighting to send me a pair of their projector LED headlights. Now these things are cool. They have a startup sequence, switchbacks, everything. They're plug and play, super simple. I'm going to talk real quick a little bit about the differences in the budget levels and the features and everything from a light like this. We're going to open these up and check them out versus an Amazon headlight like this. So these are packaged very nicely right off the bat. Plenty of styrofoam. One of the big things is they're DOT compliant, factory fitment, and they're plug and play. These are going to have a much higher quality polycarbonate lens. And they're just, it's just going to be a higher quality headlight all around. Fortunately, unfortunately, with the Silverado, we have to take the whole front grill off. And actually, there's a bolt behind each fender liner that we got to get to also. Again, there's nothing wrong with these Amazon headlights. If you want to replace them every few years, it's fine. For the price, it is what it is. They look good, though. So especially if you're going to sell your vehicle and you got a bad set of headlights. Again, this is just a decision you have to make. I'm keeping my truck, and I have a vision for my truck, and I just want a certain look. And that startup sequence is going to be sick. Now, this is what I currently have on my truck. These are the blacked out housings from Amazon. They're about 110 bucks. And then I have the LEDs from, I don't know if you see that in there, from superbrightleds.com. These are really bright. The problem is they don't have that cutoff. People are always flashing their high beams. Uh, the low beams are so bright, I've never really had to use the high beams, to be honest. And even though a lot of these Amazon ones say that they're DOT approved and whatever the Canadian version of that is approved, they're really not. They're just made and put out for sale. These will last quite a while. But you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, the clear is already, the clear coat's already coming off these. And these are, I don't know, almost two years old. This side's doing a little better. I don't know what happened to that other side. The thing is with these form lightings, they come with a two year. Don't quote me on this. You'll have to go to the website and check it out. But these are DOT compliant. You have the LED, whatever they are, projectors. But you're going to get that nice crisp cutoff line with these. So you're not going to be blinding people that are coming at you in traffic. Everything is supposed to be plug and play. You come with your harnesses right here to adapt it. Um, I got to get the instructions out and look at those. They even come with some fascia pieces on the newer Chevys. Uh, these can be paint matched to the vehicle. So that's what these are. These click on right here and you can actually paint those if I wanted to match the car. But I'm going to leave all this black because we're going to end up going with a black metal grill. And I think it's going to look good. We're going to do some custom work to the bull bar too. But that'll be a whole other video. In order to change these out, I have to pop the hood, get this grill off. There's a couple bolts and there's another bolt behind here. So it's really not too bad. It takes about an hour. I'll show parts of the process and whatever. But I know the most interesting thing right now is going to be what are these going to look like on there? And what are they going to look like at night? If you want to skip this part, just go ahead and go to about five minutes. It'll take you to the next part. I did a time lapse on this because it takes up so much time. But essentially, we're just removing the grill. There's a handful of bolts. There's one bolt on each side behind the fender liner. Chevy's make it real simple. Back in the day, it used to just be a little pin you pull, and you could actually just pull the headlights out. But the newer the cars get, the more intuitive it takes. One time and effort it takes to get these headlights out. Why they do that, I don't know. I'm just kind of running the daytime running light wire and that's why i was saying if you want to skip ahead i just wanted to show everything that i was doing i've had these headlights out several times so i can do it fairly quick what i do want to talk about though is when you're running this wire for the daytime running light make sure you run it correctly start from the fuse box go to your driver's side run it across make sure you get your plugs with all the slack you need and then find a way to run it i ran mine against the front radiator support bar and zip tied it up and made sure to run the wire so that they're not going to get rubbed through on anything like that and if you 
can do this part good, it'll set yourself up for success and make sure that you don't have no problems in the future and everyone will be happy. All right, so we're gonna skip to the good part. The first thing we need to do is it comes with a little harness like this. You plug it into your fuse box. If you go on the website, there'll be a video to tell you which one, depending on what car you have. This is actually for the daytime running light, which is this and this. If you don't plug that in, you won't have your daytime running light. So what I suggest is to get the headlight in like this. Now, on the Chevys, for whatever reason, if you don't have your high beams, you have to switch. There's a green and red wire. So this one's your running lights. Don't worry about that. But these two right here, the green and red, switch them around. Some years on the Chevy, they were uh, wired differently. So in order to make them work for all the years, it's either green to red or red to red. And once you switch them around, you have your high beams, everything like that. Let me show you what these kind of look like. So boom. You got the switchbacks. I'll have to get someone to turn the key on to do a startup sequence. But you want to get everything pretty much mocked up. And then what we're going to do is run that daytime running light wire. You want to run it as cleanly as possible. You want to make sure it's not going to hit your fans or anything like that. I have a bunch of other wiring, so I did mine slightly different. I recommend following the instructions. Be really careful when you're installing these to make sure that they're not going to drop. Last thing you want to do is put a scratch across these. And so far, that's it. So one of the tips real quick, leave everything loose. Let's get all the headlights in, the wiring. Then we'll run the daytime running light wires. Don't tighten anything up till you get the grill on there. Because you're going to have to adjust the headlights to make everything match and get your body lines right. But already that is looking sick. So as far as running the wire, it's pretty simple. I came in around the windshield washer reservoir. I plugged it in here first and then ran it that way. And then I started over there, gave that side enough slack. And we have it zip tied here. We have it zip tied here, zip tied here, and zip tied here. And that way the vibrations won't hit it. And make sure that any part touching metal, I don't know if you can see that, is at least has the rubber protector around it. When the factory piece is back over the top, you won't even see that wire. Real quick, we better make sure that this headlight works. Boom. Boom. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and get with putting the headlights back in. Again, leave everything loose. And the prime example was I had to remove this to run the wire a different way. One other thing I want to talk about is you wonder why these are going to cost a little bit more is because these have their own electronics, relays, everything. So essentially what this does is take the main power coming in. And then when the car tells it to turn on, I believe... It's got like all its own relays and stuff in there and that's what's gonna make these things last. Those are nice. So again, we have everything loose. The next step is going to be, we need to put the grill back on. Once we put the grill on, and then I can make sure the headlights and everything are lined up perfect. The whole installation really is not that bad. Honestly, the hardest part is taking that damn grill off. So now we want to make sure all our body lines are correct. We have nice gaps here. I'm going to tell you right now, these fit a lot better than those. Those I have to shove in there and they were rubbing on the fender right here. You can actually see it. They don't put very much thought into, they don't put very much money into the research and development on like the cheaper ones. Again, there's nothing wrong with them. It just depends what you want. We'll check the body lines here. Make sure everything's good. You don't want this to rub so you're gonna have to adjust it and then tighten but the first thing you want to do is get it forward a little bit and then tighten that one down there and that'll set the forward placement and then we can mess with these okay see you see how that popped out like that just perfect now we have nice even line all the way around like oem fitment boom nice even line you can see where the old headlights were rubbing right there Boom, I'm happy with that, so let's go ahead and get this tightened down. So this will wrap up the installation. 
uh, I can't show you guys what it looks like is daytime right now let's go ahead and turn on the hazards I don't have hyper flash no more which is very nice and when you're going down the road and your DRLs are on when these go off um, like if you have your left blinker on that stays white that one will flash uh, they switch back so it's pretty cool so what I want to show you guys real quick is you see how the covers on and you don't see any wiring a lot of people are going to be tempted just to run that wire you know right over the radiator hose and right through there don't do that take the extra time and do it right these are nice headlights they're high quality now I have a bunch of extra wiring but you can see everything is where it should be we even have it all zip tied up right there sorry if it's dark it's not that hard to do it takes a few extra minutes and it looks good imagine if i just had that drl light wire going right across there it would look ugly at the minimum you could even just put it underneath this and it would be okay <laughs> there we have it she's done literally hour and a half of my time including making this video and we are updated on the looks cool thing is they give me a piece to go right here if i wanted to paint match this to the truck but i'm not sure what i'm gonna do yet i'm not what type of grill i do want to put a light up emblem and wire that into the drls um yeah i'm just super pumped we'll have to wait till nighttime and go take her out hopefully i don't have to adjust them the one side is easy because i don't have the second battery but this side you got the air box sometimes you have to take the air box out uh, it's not that big a deal i did it on the last set but you want to get that cutoff line i'll show you what i mean in another video but there we go form lighting we got the headlights in the amazon ones out and we're ready to go